Hi there, I'm Lucas, I make terrain and custom miniatures for my D&D games. In this video we'll see if we can make a simple dwarven stronghold without the use of XPS foam. There will be no excuses this time. I started by grabbing some corrugated cardboard. By cutting this piece in the middle I got a good rough starting point for making the stronghold walls. To minimize gluing and to maximize simplicity I decided to fold the long pieces into the outer walls. Okay, it will look something like this. A keep will go in there and I'll make a gate that fits over that opening. To make this into one solid structure, these two pieces need to be well connected. For this purpose I made these narrow bridges out of cardboard, like this. I also glued in a barbecue stick under to make the bridges more rigid. I made markings on both sides and glued the bridges in between the walls, a bit under the top of the wall. When the glue had cooled down a bit, I added more for good measure. After also merging the walls back here, I noticed that my castle keep fits right in here. See. I can use the modular castle to go along with this piece. Amazing, however, I'll make a dwarven battlement instead of the roof on top. I was now convinced this will work. I measured the width of the gate side wall and cut out something like this. I'll make a functional gate here later, gluing that in place while preparing to shape the walls. I cut out this part of the wall, all the way down to the level of the walkway we will glue in here soon. I then used the cutout pieces shape to trace out all the other battlement features. No cutting wounds this time. Great. I'll keep the cutouts for later use, I thought. And an obligatory kitchen knife cutting test. Seems to work. Next, I cut out a bunch of these 2cm wide walkways. The bridges were 3cm, so these are slightly narrower. 2 meters wide in the scale I use. I then made sure where to cut. The corners were the most difficult, but swiftly I managed to prepare all the walkways. I just glued them in place and thought I might add barbecue sticks later as reinforcements. Leading up to the gatehouse battlements, these walkways are bent so that they lead up to the wall. I used the cutout gate piece as a guide for creating the gate itself. Using these two pieces I cut out here, I was able to place the sliding gate into its position. Looks a bit fiddly, but this is simple to do. There we go. Who dares enter? Good day, sir! I then added these pieces to form the battlements on top. I made sure the angle on that side is the same angle that was used in the earlier cuts. And the walkways should leave a bit of room for a strip of cardstock we'll add later. Or the gate won't slide. Just a cutout here to finish this part. Moving on. Next I made the top of the keep, starting with the floor. Then used this long strip as a wall. It's lower than the outer walls, but wide enough for me to add these features. It seems to fit on nicely. I then cut away the excess, as well as the usual openings on the battlements. These are a bit wider than those of the lower walls. Using the pieces I cut out, I made this thing. I placed it on top and glued on a roof. Perhaps I can put a door here and a ballista on top. Who knows what the dwarves have going on? None of your business! Up next, I made a bunch of cardboard pieces for extra detail. They will cover most corners and awkward areas. I cut through the middle of one side so that the pieces bend nicely. Up here, the corner pieces go a bit over and under the walls. Looks great. Good, now let's do smaller things. 
a liftable ladder type walkway will go here. I poked a BB acoustic through these bits, then glued a larger piece in between. Seems to work, I glued it under the bridge. Great. Look at all these ugly exposed parts. They must be covered. For this step I will use good old cardstock. I cut out a bunch of these strips that are as wide as the cardboard is thick. I do need quite a lot of these. These are not even enough. Luckily I do eat lots of oats. Time to glue them on. I started by using hot glue. While gluing, remember to remove the extra hot glue mess as you go. It seems to come off easily while still warm. It looks like I actually cut the strips a bit too wide, but now that I think of it, this works better. More edges to dry brush later. I made these pieces a bit longer, that adds some nice detail. And yeah, this must be the most time consuming part of the craft, but it looks good so it's worth it. Do tell me if you have any good ideas for covering ugly parts of the cardboard. It might be useful if you don't want to spend too much time on this step. Yeah, all surfaces need to be covered. These are convenient for the walkways, as any minis placed on will not slide away. What works best for these tricky parts is to add on larger pieces first. Then when the glue cools down a bit you can cut away the excess. Here I evened out this tricky edge by pouring in hot glue and then burning my fingers. As exceptions from the 5mm wide strips, I covered the corners of the tower with thicker pieces that have some detail. Let's fix that next. I took a wider cardstock strip, bent it and made an angled cut. Great, it fits right in. Then I also placed a door here. And lastly, before the next step, I secured the sliding gate with cardstock. Make sure to not glue the gate stuck, that's too defensive even for stubborn dwarves. Do you know what machiculations are, or how to pronounce them correctly? Well, this is my fantasy dwarven version of one. Basically, archers can shoot straight down from the battlements while staying in good cover. You can't hide below the walls. I made them by cutting these cutouts in half, and I'll be using the lower part. Here we have leftover spruce. I cut them into short bits and used them to attach the cardboard together with hot glue. Then I added the strip of cardstock as usual. I made all of the openings in the same way, and in between here I'll show you that I covered this and made these much in the same way as these, and covered up the gate side. As an exception, the battlement above the gate had to be done a bit differently. I actually figured this out when I effectively jammed the gate shut. Alright, if you think the content is useful or even inspiring, make sure to join the craft by subscribing and give this video a like in the end. Great, before base coating I added small details on the gate and on the door. Let's keep it simple. Next, I coated the walkways with PVA glue, then sprinkled on sand flocking. I used bark chopping because I didn't have any sand at hand. To keep it simple, just use sand if you got any. I was not quite sure about the size of the grain. How did the large stones get up on the walkways? I don't know. Next, I base painted the walkways with a black, brown and glue mixture. It will keep everything in place. It has dried now and the surface is not too rough. Good. I noticed a few ill-placed bits and simply removed them. A few too large stones were torn away as well. Next, Italian base coat for the rest of the stronghold. Just black this time. Basically, I covered everything with this strong black base coat. The bridges are strong enough to hold on while painting. That's great. And of course, the gate was painted separately. Here it is all base painted in black. I went over the surfaces with a smaller brush to cover some naked spots I found at the edges of the cardstock pieces after the first round of painting. 
I then dry brushed the sand with light brown. All the bark bits stayed in place, so the base coat seems to be working just fine. With that done, I continued by heavily dry brushing the walls with grey. Yeah, just dry brushing over everything. Some may not be a fan of the cardboard textures that become visible when dry brushing, but I like them. They actually add to this piece quite a lot. I will do some more dry brushing, but first I painted the details with a dark copper. Just this copper paint mixed with some black. I tried to be careful, but eventually I messed up. I fixed it with a wet brush. Okay, it looked something like this once I was done. I covered some errors with a diluted black. Then I also went over some spots with the diluted black, smearing in some dirtier areas. I'm really happy with the stronghold so far. Click any button on YouTube if you agree. Great. Next I dry brushed these corners with a tan. I could have painted them with the copper, but I like the look of dry brushed cardstock. And the brushing noises are glorious. Venturing on with the same paint to dry brush the walkways unevenly, leaving some areas darker. I think that the sand and stone textures really seem to work. Then I just dry brushed the dark copper surfaces with copper. We can't see much in the footage, but the edges became a bit more defined. However, it seemed that the tan worked much better for this as well. Yeah, this works well together with the modular castle parts. If you want to learn how to make more simple castle terrain, check out that playlist over there. The Dwarven Stronghold is formidable and it's easy to craft. I like it. Learn how to make more simple terrain by subscribing to Bard's Craft. Do that and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, craft more terrain and minis. Good news, we have reached our first grand goal on Patreon, thanks to everybody involved. If you truly appreciate the content, you can join the crafting journey on Patreon and support the making of these videos. I hope to see you there.